Shalom, family. This is Dr. Durr. All praises to the Most High Yahuwah. He who breathes life, behold the nail hands. His son, Yahusha, Yahuwah is salvation. The Ruach Hakadesh, the set apart spirit, the comfort of the one who leads us in all truth. Praying that all is well with you and your family. Praying you will be obedient and that you will accomplish all that the Most High Yah has given you to do. Hallelujah. So good to be back. I have a lesson tonight that's going to be a little longer than no normal. Uh, it's one of my, what we call my long series teachings. Uh, tonight, I'm going to talk to you from the topic, the order of the angelic hosts, dealing with angels, the order of the angelic hosts. What I first want you to understand to do tonight, I need you to follow the flow. I'm going to flow and to start this flow, I'm going to be dealing with a subject other than dealing with angelic it's going to be the apostolic teaching you about rank and structure then bring you into the angelic rank and structure i'm just using this as a stage a platform to build and take you into uh the angelic host teaching it's a it, this is a platform stepping stone just stay in tune with me i'm going to get you to where we're going to but i need to start out with the apostolic uh, according to the scripture and bring you into where I'm going with definitions uh, and order okay we're going to get into that also you're going to see different pictures in here tonight I found pictures that I think would be uh, good to uh, utilize for this presentation by no means are we worshiping idols hear me worshiping idols these are just pictures that we're utilizing to show you and give you a vivid viewpoint of this subject that I'm talking about. By no means are we worshiping these things. These are just teaching references. Just what we call presentation boosters. Okay? No, we don't worship any idols, any images. We only worship Yahuwah. Hallelujah. And so tonight I'm going to start out with, let's go to the apostolic. <clears throat> According to the scriptures, the apostolic ministry is first in ranking. I'm going to show you in the scripture what do I mean by first in ranking because many people think that the apostolic order has gone for today. It's no more. We don't need it anymore. Uh, uh, it's over. But in the New Testament, we see that the apostles were utilized, the prophets were utilized, the teachers, the evangelists, and the pastors were utilized, and they were never uh, uh, wiped out. These were meant to be utilized to bring rank, order, and structure. I'm going to show you scriptures in Ephesians 4. Now I'm going to start with 1 Corinthians 12 and 27. I'm just building my point. Going to the angelic host, you're going to see we're dealing with the apostolic ministry is first in ranking, dealing with how the order should go in ministry application. Listen to what I'm saying. Don't get ahead no, I'm not teaching about angels right now. I'm just teaching on this subject first to get you to where I want you to go. Showing you about rank, structure, and order. We're talking about the order of the angelic host, but this is just a stepping stone to get us there. 1 Corinthians 12 and 27 says, Now ye are the body of Hamashiach and members in particular. And Yahuwah has set some in the church. Look, some in the church. First apostles, secondarily prophets, uh, thirdly teachers, after that, miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversity of tongues. Uh, then it goes down, it, it shows you all these different things that should be functioning and operating in the church. But we have uh, uh, done these, some of these things, but we have made a mess and a mockery of a lot of those things. Uh, that's why order needs to be brought back into the body of Hamashiach, where his people have set apart leadership that will guide his people into all truth. Hallelujah, by way of the Ruach Hakadesh, who is the one that's going to lead you into all truth. As we're led by the Ruach, so can uh, the people be led uh, by us as we're led by uh, the Ruach Hakadesh, because he's the one that's going to lead leadership. So you see that the apostles were first, secondarily the prophets, and thirdly the teachers. I know many people said that's, uh, that, that's not anymore, there's no New Testament. Uh, we don't believe in the apostles. We don't believe in the prophets, the, the pastors, the evangelists, and the teachers. I say to you, that's on you. That's what you believe. According to the scriptures, Hamashiach laid these things out and gave gifts unto men. And therefore, these things should be walked in and operating in and functioning. 
The deal is we have we have people in uh, leadership positions that are, don't know exactly what they're doing. Then we have some that know what they're doing, but they don't have all the, the total role. They don't have the total insight. Then we have some that have insight, that have a lot of wealth of knowledge and a lot of wisdom, uh, but they're not willing to share it with anyone else but their little crew. So there's a lot of stuff that's going on, and I'm here as y'all lead me, leads me to teach his people uh, according to the scripture. I have people uh, uh, that follow me uh, as I teach the truth of y'all's word. Then I have uh, people that I follow, leadership that I follow. So there is order, there is rank. Then it goes down to say, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles? have all the gifts of healing, do all speak with tongues, do all interpret, but er covered earnestly the best gift, and yet I show unto you a more excellent way. That's when Paul was getting ready to deal with love, which is the more excellent way. So we see here how Paul is showing you that there's rank, there's order, there's structure. No, everybody is not an apostle. It's too many people naming themselves apostles today. Everybody want to be a prophet. Everybody want to be a teacher. Everybody want to be a worker of miracles. You can't all do that stuff. He has not given all those gifts to everyone. Someone has to be the followers, someone that can be taught in the audience. It's, it's amazing that everyone, when they get a snip of leadership position, they go crazy. They 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 uh, get belligerent. They turn on leadership. They they get beside themselves. You know why? Because they were never called into that position of leadership, uh, especially if they got beside themselves. So you need to check yourself. Now, if y'all has called you into that position and you get beside yourself, you are going to be dealt with by the Most High Yah. Okay, let's go on. I don't want to stick with that because I get to those subjects later. I just want to make a point here. Then we go to uh, Ephesians 4, rank, order, character, and structure again. And he, Yahushua, gave some apostles, some, that means they're other, not just Paul, the apostle, Peter, James, John, not just those uh, 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 apostles, but he gave some others to be an apostle. Some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some pastors, and some teachers. Many people are scared to uh, uh, get into these arenas, but I have taught on these arenas many days. I have books on this stuff. I have information on this stuff, inside on this stuff. And we need to be operating in these arenas as Yah's people. It just, only thing it does, we're about to show you what it does, the 12th verse for the perfecting of the saints, the body of Hamashiach. Those people that are in those positions bring order and perfecting and teaching for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Hamashiach. 13, till we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of Yahuwah, unto a perfect man, unto the measure, the statue of the fullness of Hamashiach, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro, cared about whatever way in the doctrine, by the slay of men, cunning craftiness, whereby they lie and wait to deceive. But speaking to excuse me, the truth and love may grow up unto him in all things which are the head, even Hamashiach, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by the which every joint supplied according to the effectual working and the measure of every part, make an increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. So you see that total picture there where Hamashiach, uh, Hamashiach Yahushua gave some apostles, you got prophets, you got evangelists, pastors and teachers, these five-fold ministry gifts were put in the body of Hamashiach to perfect his people for the work of the ministry, to get his people trained and programmed to go forward to do the bidding of the Most High Yah. That's what it's for. I was just showing you the rank order structure. I told you I'm moving forward. Now, the definition of rank, a degree or position of eminence, excellence or dignity, a grade of official standing, a person of high rank or achievement, excellence, uh, extremely high quality, dignity, worth, honor, a place of respect. We may be equal in Hamashiach in uh, the way of our salvation or deliverance uh, that we receive, but there is different uh, rankings, spiritually speaking. These rankings carry different degrees of power and authority in the spirit realm. There are some apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Each one of those gifts operate totally different and you see from the very beginning in first corinthians 12 chapter that the apostolic is first then you have the prophets there's an order there's a method 
there is a function, there is a flow. Some people say, well, I don't see pastor, I don't see that. Well, those are what we call the governmental things. If you go back to that scripture, you will see that he said, helps, governments. You see that? Those are different things that bring order and structure into it. You saw the apostle, you saw the prophet, then you saw the teacher. You need the teacher. I have a, a, I did a teaching in one of my books called Process and Development, where I use, if you look at your hand, your hand is, is a great guide for the five-fold ministry gift. Your thumb being the apostle, the pointing finger next to the thumb is what, what we call the prophet. The middle finger is what we call the evangelist. The ring finger is what we call the pastor and is preparing Hamashiach's bride and the baby finger is the uh, is the teacher. That's the only one that can get inside your ear, the baby finger, and clean everything out. So you need to have a teacher. But if you don't have that thumb, the ap apostolic, you can't hold a cup properly or hold anything together because you need that thumb which gathers things together. You need that pointing finger, which is a prophet, which points you all the way. You need the middle finger that gathers everything. The, the bigger finger, it gathers the flock in, gathers the people in. And you need that ring finger, which is the uh, pastor's teaching and bringing the bride together for Hamashiach. And you need the baby finger, which is the teacher, which bring us into the in-depth knowledge into the things of Yah. So you see that order? There is an order. I pray that you're getting this. I pray that you receive this. Uh, if you don't understand, that's okay. I'm still going to teach it. So let's get back to the slides. Here's another definition. First, we told you the apostles are first, chiefly the one at the top. Highest ranking, significance, influence of greatest importance or office. Remember, we're talking about the order of the angelic host. We're getting ready to get into the angels, but I'm just bringing you rank and structure to show you how even in the angelic structure, the demonic realm, there are different uh, ranking and structures uh, set apart for angels and devils and demons. So we're, first, first off, I'm just, making, I'm just bringing this clarity to you that there's order in the body of Hamashiach, then there's also order in the satanic realm, in the demonic realm. I was in the army and in the military, you had a rank structure and same goes for operating in the spirit realm. You have the Elohim head, which is the father, the son, and the set apart spirit, all of one Yahuwah in action. That's what I call it. You see the father, which is Yahuwah, the son, which is Yahuwah in the son, and the set apart spirit, which is Yahuwah's spirit. So it's Yahuwah in operation in the three. So it's Yahuwah. It's all Yahuwah. He's Yahuwah in action. Hallelujah. Then you see, because the Bible say, uh, uh, the Yahuwah is one. He is one. Our Elohim is one. That's it. It's one. He is the one that came in the form of his son. He is that set apart spirit. All are one. Yahuwah is in action. One. We have rank in the army of Yahuwah, the body of Hamashiach. You have the ranking of the angelic host. You have rank in the spirit realm, ranking among devils. Uh, rank, uh, remember all ranking has a certain amount of power base in that position. Many need to ask for discernment to comprehend this very important order of the Most High Yah. So there's order. We're going to show you some scripture here. You see, even devils uh, 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 and demons reckon, uh, recognize spiritual rank. Yahushua walked in his authority and power, Acts 10 and 38. Yahushua went about doing good, healing people with devils. He healed people that had devils. They understood. They saw his power. They saw his ranking. Apostles walked in the power. And Elohim wrought miracles by the hand of the, uh, of, of the apostle Paul. The disciples, even the disciples uh, uh, dealt with demons. The, the 70 went out <clears throat> as Yahushua sent them out. Excuse me. He sent them out to ministers, and they went out to minister and cast out demons. He told them, don't be rejoicing because the devils are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your name is written in heaven. But we see where even the devils are subject to us in Yahushua's name. Are you catching that? You don't have to be afraid of no devil. You walk in Yahushua's name. You got power over all that power of the devil, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Every believer has a specific rank to cast out devils. Mark 16 and 7. And these signs shall follow them that believe, not those in the fivefold office, the apostles, the prophet, the pastor, the teacher, or evangelist. No. Any believer in Hamashiach, he said, if you use his name, not your name, his name, shall they cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues. That's what the scripture says. Angels and evil spirits also must recognize, adhere to, respect the rank of one place over them. The ones placed over them. Remember, angels and evil spirits also, the Bible said we, 
in Corinthians, one day are going to be judging angels. The devils are subject unto us. They understand who we are in Hamashiach. Uh, remember uh, uh, the devil in Matthew 8 and 29 on down. Devils cried out, what have we to do with thee? You come to torment us before our time. See, there was another scripture uh, in the book of Acts where Paul was casting out devils, but then the seven sons of Sceva. The seven sons of Sceva uh, uh, walked around. They were playing with this thing, and they messed around and messed with a person uh, with devils. And all of a sudden, they got the, they went up to the devil and said, we cast you out in the name that Paul preached, Shoel preached. Uh, uh, we cast you out in Yahushua's name. And when they began to try to do that, the devils turned around and said, Paul I know, and Yahushua I know, but who are you? See, they didn't recognize those people because they were not counted amongst Yah's people. Yah's people. Are you hearing me? Don't play with this thing if you have not accepted Hamashiach into your life as the Redeemer of Israel, as the Savior of Yisrael. Hallelujah. You have to know him in the fellowship of his suffering and the power of his resurrection. If you don't know him, you don't have the power with him. So therefore, the demons don't recognize you. They only understand and recognize the rank, order, and structure of the believers, the fivefold uh, office of Hamashiach's leadership that's the only people they understand those are in leadership those that are the believers of Yah, uh, those believers of yahusha hamashiach are you hearing me those are the only authority they understand we can command resist rebuke decree and cast out devils anytime you shouldn't be surprised about that now we're going to deal with the order of the angelic host according to the scripture Remember the saying, for every new level, there's a new devil. Every time you go higher in Yah, you're going to have to face new devils, new tactics of the enemy. It's only elevated tactics of the devil. It's the same devil. He used the same game. He used the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. He used it against Hamashiach in the wilderness experience. He used it against Adam and Eve in the garden of uh, Eden, the, the lust of the flesh. The lust of the eyes and the pride of life. These are the only operating arenas that that enemy operates in. That's all he does, but he keeps coming back with more elevated, different tactics to make you think it's something different, but it's the same tactics over and over again. He just pushes it higher and comes after those higher that are in higher arenas, uh, arenas and that are operating in the power and authority of the Most High Yah. These are superior devils and demons operating in the arena. We're going to talk about those. There are so many that won't these high-ranking titles and positions of the apostle, prophets, pastors, teachers, and evangelists, but don't comprehend, don't understand that once you tamper with or put on these powerful supernatural rankings, they be you become a target of the hosts of hell, and devils begin to perk up and plan these individuals' downfall and demise. So if you are not called to the order of this service, you need to run from it. Everybody want to be in the limelight. Everybody want to be seen ego tripping. Yes, there are many of those that walk with Yah that have fallen prey to the enemy. You look throughout the scripture, you see David falling. But he still was king after he got back up. You see others that fail, but they got back up. You see, y'all, you catch one of them, Peter fell. He did. He cursed, lied, and denied Hamashiach, but Peter ended back up. On the day of Pentecost, 3,000 souls ended up coming to Hamashiach. Are you hearing me? Begin to believe in Hamashiach, who he was. But Peter made a mistake. He failed, but he got back up. Are you hearing me? He got back into his position, and Peter began to do many wonderful works for Hamashiach. But we're going to deal with the angels, rank, order, characters, and, and structure. Uh, uh, here's one here. Uh, you can find some of the lists of angels and demons of theology, in theology, from Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia. You go to Ephesians 6 chapter, we're going to uh, talk about the four rebel spirits. And I have a book entitled How to Deal with Devils, the Four Kinds of Rebel Spirits, being revised at this moment. So I wrote a book on how to deal with the devil, but it's being revised. We deal with a lot of things. Uh, a lot of spirits dealing with uh, uh, different uh, demons of depression, oppression, suppression. We went through a lot of things, but I'm not going to deal with those tonight. I'm giving you a uh, uh, order of the apostolic host, just a brief overview. So we, hit, we, we now we're going to start with the angelic rankings. Hebrew and Hebraic tradition has always held that there are seven archangels. We're going to deal with those seven archangels. Archangels, we have Michael, Michael, the warrior, the one who protects Israel. You can find him in Exodus 14, uh, 14 chapter, 18 through 31. 
Daniel 10, 9 through 21, uh, and 12 and 1, Jude 1 and 9, 1 Thessalonians 4 and 16. You will find Michael the angel in operation. Then you have Gabriel, the messenger angel. He who stands in the presence of Elohim, he is known for bringing messages, clarity, insight to Yah's people. Example brought message to Zechariah concerning John the Baptist's birth, and message to Joseph and Mary concerning, concerning Yahushua's birth. Luke, the first chapter, pretty much the whole first chapter deals with him dealing with Mary, and him also dealing with uh, uh, Matthew 1, dealing with Mary and Joseph, and uh, also Luke 1, dealing with John the Baptist, Zechariah and John the Baptist. So, Michael and Gabriel, Michael the warrior, uh, fights uh, for Israel, protects Israel, and Gabriel, what we call the messenger angel. As I told you, these are just brief overviews. Here's one called the cherubim. You've seen the cherubim angels. These are not the cute and cuddly little fat angels with bows and arrows. They are powerful creatures who surround you, who is thrown, who will defend the Most High's holiness from any contamination by sin. If you read Genesis 3 and 24, Exodus 25, 18 and 20, Ezekiel 1, 1 through 18, you'll see the chair bearings in action. We're going, to, we're going to go to a little deeper detail on some of the other ones. We're going to break down some more about the chair beams. We want to show you some chair beam angels in action. Uh, let's go on to the next slide. What was Lucifer called? He was called the anointed cherub. He was a chair beam. If you look at Ezekiel the 28th chapter, we're going to look at the authorized King James Version. It says, let me let me get my uh, Bible here. Y'all excuse me for a minute. Getting ahead of myself. I'm very excited about this lesson. I know you are too. Hallelujah. And I appreciate all of you that come to these lessons and receive from these lessons. If you don't like the lesson, you don't have to stay. Listen and go. It don't matter. I have to teach what Yah has given me to teach. You find what he tells you to teach, you teach that. I'm going to teach what he tells me to teach. Now, when you look at the, uh, uh, Ezekiel 28, starting with the 12th verse, it says, we're going to go to the 20th verse, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus said Yahuwah Elohim, Thou sealed up the psalm, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty, Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of Elohim. Now, this is talking about the anointed cherub, the king of Tyrus. This is Lucifer. Listen to what it says. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of Elohim. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardis, the topaz, the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, the carbuncle, and the gold. The workmanship of thy tapestry and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. When Yah created him, he built this cherub. He built this cherub. Look what they call him in the 14th verse. Thou art the anointed cherub that covered, and I have set thee so. Thou was upon the holy mountain of Yah. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. This being was made the way Yah wanted him to be made. He was the worshiper over Yah. He worshiped Yah. But then iniquity was found in his heart in the book of Isaiah, the 14th chapter that breaks it down, tells you what happened to him when he began to boast and brag about what he was going to do. And we found out how he got kicked out of heaven for his little arrogant and, and self-righteous pride. Now he's trying to bring as many people as he can with him to his pre predestined place, which is hell and the lake of fire. The Bible said hell was not made for man, but for the devil and his angels. We go because we choose to choose uh, uh, Lucifer and his way and his imps, following his demonic imps. Now we're going to go on down. The 15th verse, look what it said about Lucifer, this uh, anointed cherub. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created, till iniquity was found in thee. You see that? There it is. Iniquity was found in him. But the multitude of thy merchandise, thou hast filled the midst of thee with violence. And thou hast sinned. Therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of Yah. I will destroy thee. The mountain of Yah is a holy place. The Bible says in Psalms uh, 48, uh, um, Great is Yah, and greatly to be praised in the city of our Yah, in the mountain of his holiness. Beautiful for situation. Joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion on the side of the north city of the great king. So we see he got cast out of that holy place. 
because uh, he want to bring all that filth in. He said, I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. He got lifted up because he thought he thought he looked good. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by the reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled thy thy sanctuary by the multitude of thine iniquities, uh, by the iniquity of, uh, of thy traffic. Therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee. It shall devour thee. I will bring thee to the ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that beheld thee. All they that know thee amongst the people shall be astonished at thee. They sh thou shalt be a terror. Never shalt thou be any more. Again, the word of Yahuwah came to me saying that. He said that to that uh, uh, Lucifer, the old, the, the anointed cherub who thought he was all that and a bag of chips. Y'all cast him down. As you see, some of these pictures depicted here, just good symbolic pictures. Uh, like I said, nothing to worship, but you see how he was up on his pedestal, then he was brought down on his knee. Then you look at him at the end, uh, he's going to be uh, brought down in front of man. The Bible talks about in Isaiah 14 that the whole world was going to see him. The men, the people of the earth going to see him and say, is this the one that caused the earth to tremble? This thing right here? They're going to look at him. I always say this. This is me. I say, I bet that joker probably ain't no taller than Gary Coleman. That's my thought. I said, I bet that joker. You look, we're going to look at him and say, look at this frail, toe up joker selling wolf tickets. Got everybody scared all over the earth because you know he's a spirit. He is a spirit. Uh, uh, and so the only way he gets to go around is by invading people body at bodies as they yield to him, as they worship him. But other than that, I bet that joke was a little small Gary T Coleman wolf ticket selling demon. It just run in his mouth and got people scared. And when we see him, we're going to realize the Bible say we're going to narrowly look upon him and say, is this the one that caused the earth to tremble? Go, go to Isaiah 14. I just want to read that scripture a little bit there. Just want to read that Isaiah 14. Let me let me get some of this verse here and let you see what I'm talking about. Isaiah 14. Let me get there again. Isaiah 14. Isaiah 14. Be patient with me there, please. And I believe you're going to receive something out of here on tonight. Isaiah 14. And it says... Let me see. There it is. Go with me to the 12th verse, Isaiah 14 and 12. It said, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? Thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of Yah. I will sit also upon the mountains of the congregation in the side of the north. I will uh, ascend before the heights of uh, the clouds. I will be like the most high Yah. This joker got to bragging and boasting what he was going to be like. Yet thou shalt be brought down the hill to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall do what? Narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, is this the man that made the earth the tremble, that did shake kingdoms, that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof, that opened not the, opened not the house of his prisoners? Look at that. All the kings of the nations, even all of them lie in their glory. Every one in his own house. But thou art cast out of thy grave like an abominable branch. And so it goes on so forth. I just want to show you how when we finally get a chance to see who this devil is, devil is that's been causing all this havoc on the earth, you're going to realize you are fighting a big time chump, a wolf ticket seller, selling wolf tickets. The Bible says you got power over the devil and all the power over the devil and the people don't need to start operating in this power. I told you that before. Start realizing who you are in Hamashiach. It ain't about bragging and boasting because he bowed down to you. It's about living upright and your name is being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. That's what you praise y'all for. My name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I'm going to praise him for that. I'm not happy and running around here tell, telling everybody, ooh, the devil is subject unto me. No, that's not what I'm happy about. I'm happy because my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Hallelujah. How much she ought. Okay. Next you're going to see Luke the 18th chapter. He fell as lightning. Look what Yahushua said. Luke 10 and 18. And he said unto him, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Luke 10 and 19. Behold, I give unto you power. There it is. To tread on serpents and scorpions and demons. And over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means do what? Hurt you. 
He said, notwithstanding in this, rejoice not. He said, don't rejoice because you know this, that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice. That's what he's talking about, the spirits. When he's talking about serpents and scorpions, he's talking about, because then he came back and said that the spirits, he was just using an analogy, a breakdown, telling you who they were, are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written where? In heaven. Right there, clear, plain, and simple. Then when you go to Revel, uh, the, the, the deceiver of the whole world, Revelation 12, 9 through 11, talks about how uh, and the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out on the earth and his angels were cast out with him. You see that? Them fallen angels, they were cast out with him. But look at the 11th verse. Go to 11th verse. We're going to skip the uh, 10th verse. Now I'm going to read 10. I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our Elohim and the power of his Hamashiach. For the accuser of our brother is cast down, which accused them before our Elohim day and night. That's what that devil does all night. Like he did, Job goes back and forth, accusing the brethren. But I heard, uh, heard the scripture say in Revelation 12 and 11, that I'm about to read now, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb, Hamashiach, and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives under death. We are the overcomers. We will win. Hallelujah. I pray that you're getting something from this. I pray that you're receiving this on the night. Here's another one. The fallen angels by name. We dealt with this when you read the book of Enoch, the 8th chapter 1. Uh, the first verse, it tells you how these fallen angels, the one that came with Lucifer, began to share uh, different things with the sons of men. And the sons of men became uh, uh, became uh, contaminated by these fallen spirits and ended up doing things that they shouldn't have done. And these fallen sp uh, spirits ended up getting judged uh, heavy by the Most High Yah. They were under, strict, uh, uh, under heavy judgment. And you know that they have a time that their real judgment is going to take place. Now they've been held in their, pr their prison until Yah uh, says otherwise. So you see that right there? I'm not going to read into that. You can read it yourself. Uh, Enoch 8 and 1, uh, all the way down uh, 1 through 9. You can read those verses. deals with those different uh, uh, angels. Get, get, even gives their names and show you what they taught. This is where most of the stuff that we deal with on today came from. Uh, the sorcery, the observing of the stars, the, the signs, the astronomy, horoscope, all that crazy stuff. Uh, uh, they, they begin to deal with transgression, fornication. They begin to show people how to do all this stuff and get men, mankind all twisted up because of all this uh, evil and wickedness. Uh, and they, when they did that, they messed us up and we have been in trouble with the Most High Yah for going into these arenas that we were never supposed to know. But these fallen angels got us over in these places and caused us to go deeper. We know that Adam and Eve did uh, uh, sin in the garden and we took on sin, but the sin got deeper as these uh, angelic uh, fallen creatures began to teach man this wickedness and this abomination before Yah. Now, we're going to talk about the four kind of rebel spirits. When you deal with the book of Ephesians, the sixth chapter, the tenth through the twentieth verse, you you begin to deal with it. This comes from this one of the sections in my book. I deal with the, how to deal with the devil. I deal with the four kinds of rebel spirits. I'm going to read the scripture. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but then I'm going to show you uh, uh, the Greek words when it comes down to dealing with these four uh, other angels that we talked about. I mean, we talked about there are seven uh, different angel rankings. Here's the other four. Uh, four kinds of spirit rebels. Find your brother and be strong in Yah in the power of his might. Put on the whole arm of Yah that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against what? Flesh and blood. You are not my enemies. None of my Hebrew brothers and sisters, none of the foreigners that's going with us, none of the people that are out here in the world are our enemies. It's devils that uh, operate through these people. You got to look behind the scene. You're dealing with devils. You're dealing with spirits. But look what we fight against, against principalities. If you look down there at the bottom, you see the Greek word, arcus. These are arcus, things in a series, a leader, ruler, a magistrate, chief ruler, being of the highest rank and order in the satanic kingdom. Uh, satanic kingdom. So the Bible says, but you uh, wrestle against what? Principality. These are one of the ruling, chief ruling demons with Lucifer. 
They are of the highest rank order in, sa in the satanic kingdom. These are the principalities. Archaeus, the principalities, uh, the high ranking demons in Lucifer's regime. Are you catching what I'm saying? I told you there's a ranking structure. I had to start off at the beginning to show you that we have ranking structure and order in Hamashiach, and there's ranking stru structure and order with devils. Next, you have and against powers. Let me read the rest of it. Against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, I've taken to you the whole arm of Yah, that you may be able to withstand the evil day, having done all the stand. Now we're going to deal with the powers. Here's another one. The Greek word, Esousias. Authorities, those who derive their power and execute the will of the chief ruler. Whatever that principality say uh, do, those powers, those Esousia devils, demons, they go out and execute. So you're seeing that you're not, this is not a game. They have rank, they have order, and they have structure. We are in a fight. Remember Daniel? I'm going to hit that later on. How he prayed. The first day he prayed, the angel came back. The messenger Gabriel came back and told him, Daniel, your prayers were heard the first day, but we were, we were excuse me, withstood by the prince of Persia. That devil that was operating over that realm, every city, every state, Every nation has demons operating over every area. That's why you have different spirits operating over certain towns. And people say, when you go to that town, man, there's a strong demon of pedoph uh, pedophilia. There's a strong demon of adultery over there. There's a strong demon of alcoholism in that town. There's a strong devil of uh, uh, uh a murder in that city. So everywhere you go, there's a different spirit operating, a, a, a different spirit like racist spirit, uh, in some part of the spirit, a, a, a prejudiced spirit over here. Are uh, you catching what I'm saying? A hating spirit, a murder spirit. Then you go to some places, there's the spirit of love. That's when we know the Ruach is in that area. That love is there. Are uh, you catching what I'm saying? Wherever the Ruach is, there is power, there is love. Are uh, you catching what I'm saying? There's direction, there's purity. There is holiness and there is righteousness. So wherever the Ruach dwells, the Ruach, Hakadesh, there is a different vibe and a different flow coming from the throne room of Yahuwah. Are you catching what I'm saying? The next one, you got the rulers of darkness, the Greek word, Cosmos Karatos. Cosmos Karatos. The lords of the world are the prince of this age. These are the lords of the world. These are the devils that have gone out. The rulers of darkness. They go out and cause chaos. They cause all kind of stuff. They operate. The Bible called the devil the prince of the power of the air. They all over the world causing havoc and, and, and chaotic. Murdering people. The demon of rape and uh, uh, molestation. So... There, there's demons out there, y'all. There, the, those are spirits that are out there. And you can't be afraid being in Hamashiach. You need to be taught this truth. People are shunning and going away from this stuff, saying it ain't real because they have never dealt with it before. I've dealt with it many years. I've seen people get delivered. I've seen demons get cast out. I've seen people get healed. It's true. It's real. So the next one you have is spiritual wickedness. The Greek word Numa Tikita Panirius. Numa Makita Panirius. Highly injurious or destructive in nature. That's these demons. Highly injurious, the suicide demons, murdering spirits, got people running in front of cars, people taking all these drugs, uh, cannibalism. They, they, they got people mixing crystal meth, crack, all kind of drug, ice. Uh, uh, they got all type of names like that. I don't know what they, they got so many names. These different drugs that's going on right now. Man, got kids. They they uh, coming after our kids in school. Y'all pray for y'all children. Pray for your children. Pray for them every day. I pray for my grandchildren. I pray for my children that they don't take the when they, if they go out to a club. I know some of them gonna go out to a club. You can't stop that stuff. That they don't pick up the wrong drink. That nobody spike their drink. That then our kids don't eat candy that that's contaminated uh, uh, with with the wrong stuff. But I'm telling you now, I believe y'all can keep our children he can keep us that we don't get messed up too he said if you drink any deadly thing it shall not hurt you now i'm not telling you to go out there and say test drive the car and try to uh uh try to tempt y'all don't go out there tempting y'all try to prove it where well, the preacher said if you go do this this won't happen no i'm telling you right now you better not do it with he's talking about in the instance that somebody may have spiked your drink and you didn't know it was spiked and because you love Yah, he protects you and covers you. He'll protect you from that poison, from destroying your body. 
If you drink any deadly thing, it would not hurt you. He's talking about that stuff that's unknowingly drank. Not knowingly going to start the, the, the test drive to see if it's real. Don't do it. That's not what he's talking about. Don't go out there trying to prove, uh, trying to trying to uh, tempt y'all. Don't do it. You will get yourself hurt trying to be deep. I'm telling you, don't do it. I'm just saying these things, uh, Yah has a divine protection over us. He said his angels are camped around about those that fear him. Are you seeing what I'm saying? He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He shall give his angels charge over thee. Are you hearing me? We are in a warfare. Use every weapon that you have. I can't wait to hit some of these other subjects that I have. It's going to be great now. I'm moving right along. I'm showing you the order of the angelic host. Now we're going to look at the four creatures in the book of Revelation. The likeness of the four creatures, the lion, the man, the ox, and the eagle. Guess what they all are? They are cherubims. They are cherubims. If you go with me to the book of Revelations 4, Revelations 4, let me get it there. Revelations 4. I'm going to go to Revelations, the fourth chapter. I pray that this lesson is blessing you. Revelations 4. Let me skip back for a minute. Make sure I got it. Revelations 4, 6, and 8. Revelations 4, 6, and 8. It says, let's go there. And before the throne, there was a sea of glass like under crystal. And in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. And the first beast was like a lion. The second beast like a calf. The third beast had a face as a man. And the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. And the fourth beast had each of them six wings about them. And they were full of eyes, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Adonai, Elohim, Almighty, which was, which is, and is to come. Are you seeing what I'm saying? They all That's all they did was worship the Most High Yah. Let me go back. Now, if you go to the book, I want you to hear me, of Ezekiel 1, 4 through 28, you'll see these creatures again. Ezekiel 10 and 20, you'll see these creatures again. Revelations 4 and 6 and through 8. Revelation 5, 5 through 14. Revelation 7, 9 through 12. Do this on your own. Get a chance to study these things. I'm not, like I told you, I'm not going too deep in detail. It's going to be a little longer presentation, but I want you to research it for yourself. It's going to give you a description of all these creatures. Now, we're going to go on. When you begin to study the encampment of Israel, you will find that the enzymes, the banners of the four living creatures are are on each side of the tabernacle, and that it uh, it, and it will show uh, it will show an accurate description of the Mashiach Messiah's attributes. When, what do I mean by that? When you see the man, it represents the Mashiach, the face of suffering servant. When you see the lion, his leadership and his power. When you see the ox, his strength and his determination. When you see the eagle, it deals with the swift execution of judgment. So you see the banners out there in Israel, the banners are on the four sides. I'm going to show you an encampment, and each one of those banners have the face of each one of those creatures. Are you seeing what I'm saying? And each one of them represent the Mashiach in the Old Testament. Many people say, well, the Mashiach wasn't in the Old Testament. Yes, he was. He was, all, he was throughout the, the Old and the New. He was throughout the Old and New. The Father was always talking about he was going to send his son. Uh, Micah talks about it, 5 and 2. Talking about his son was going to come in, in the earth realm. Let me get it so you so you believe me. Many people want to argue about that and say that he was not there. Yes, he was. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with Yah, and the Word was Yah. It's talking about Mashiach right there. Let's go on down. Let me show you Micah. Look what it says. But thou, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, though thou be little among the thousand of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me, that is to be ruler of Israel, whose going forth have been from old. Uh-oh, he's been from the old, from everlasting. He was with Yah from the very beginning. Yah had that plan to send his son down. Are you seeing what I'm saying? He was there. He was going to send him down. He came from old. Hallelujah. Now, Watch what I'm saying here. So you see the Mashiach as the man face, the face of suffering servant, the lion, his leadership and covering, 
the power, the ox, his strength and determination. The eagle deals with his swift execution of judgment. The tabernacle gives valuable insight and shows us how to how privileged and honored we are as believers to show such magnificent detail as pertaining to the redemption of mankind through Hamashiach. So when we study the heavenly design of the tabernacle, it not only serves as Yahuwah's dwelling place on earth amongst his people, but it's the powerful aid that will bring clarity in the comprehension of Mashiach's redemptive work. Are you hearing me tonight? That should be, it's going to be good. Here we go. Now we're going to deal with the encampment. Encampments. It all started when Yah told Moses to count the 12 tribes of uh, Israel. Moses counted 603,550 men of a warrior's aid. The tribe of Levi, Levi numbering 23,300, was counted separately because the Levites replaced the firstborn to serve the sanctuary and camped around it after the firstborn were disqualified when they sinned in the worship of the golden calf. So, let's go on down. Beyond the Levi, uh, Levi camp, the 12 tribes camped in four groups with four ensigns. The arrangement of the 12 camps of the families around the tabernacle of Yahuwah, the east, the ensign of the lion. There it is. These are anointed cherubims. Them cherubims that stood before Yah, crying out day and night. The eagle, the ox, the man, and the lion. Those are the banners that, uh, that surround Israel. You're going to see it now. Here it is. The east, the ensign of the lion, the tribe of Judah. 74,600. Issachar, 54,400. Zebulon, 57,400. That's what Moses dealt with. He had to count those out. The south, the ensign of the man, the tribe of Reuben, 46,500. Simeon, 59,300. And Gad, 45,650. You get the west. You got the ensign of the ox. You got the tribe of Ephraim. Uh, of 40,500, Manasseh, 32,200, Benjamin, 35,400. Then you get to the north, you got the ensign of the eagle, the tribe of Dan, 62,700, Asher, 41,500, and Naphtali, 53,400. This formation was kept while following Yahuwah's pillar of fire through the desert for 40 years. These were the cherubim, the angels, that were around the encampment, the east, the south, the west, and the north. Here's a little picture that depicts each one of them. You had the eagle at the north. You had uh, Judah to the east. You had the south. You had uh, Reuben. Then you have the west. You have Ephraim. And you can look at it there for a minute. I'll leave it there for a minute. And you see in the middle, it deals with the tabernacle. You see each one of them. And so the enzyme or the flag was right there uh, by each encampment. The line for Judah the ox for Ephraim, the man for Reuben, and the eagle for Dan. Are you hearing me? That's beautiful. Oh, hallelujah. So you see the cherubims were represented even around the encampment of Israel. Hallelujah. Those angels were there protecting each corner, each one of those areas, each one of those areas in the encampment. Hallelujah. Those angels were on guard. Look at Yah. Look at Yah. The four, he will order his angels to protect you wherever you go. Now listen to this. Four is an important number to my the encampment. We have four corners of the earth, north, south, east, and west. Four classic elements, earth, wind, fire, and water. There are four major lunar uh, phases, the four seasons, spring, summer, fall, and winter. There are also four levels of scripture, uh, Passat, Ramaz, Dresh, and Asad. There are also four measures of design, height, length, breadth, and depth. The enzyme of the four camps of Israel shows us the attributes of Yah and Messiah, his suffering, his strength, determination, and judgment. In a similar way, the four gospel writers, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, are unique as all four gospels account ties together to give a full picture of the Messiah. So we just used to tell you about that number four in those orders, in those encampments. But when you look at what Ezekiel, Isaiah, Zechariah, and John said about the lion, the man, the ox, and the eagle, we know there are four enzymes, four attributes of El and the Messiah to consider. Listen at this. The four enzymes of the campness were Judah, lion, Reuben, man, Ephraim, ox, Daniel, the eagle. The attributes also match the prophetic description of the branch. The, in Hebrew, this is Tasimach. It is the shoot of Messiah from the Jewish root of Davidic tree, 
described by Jeremiah and Zechariah. The lion, a king, Jeremiah 23 and 5, said, Behold, the days come, said Yahuwah, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, Hamashiach, and a king shall reign and prosper and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. He was in the Old Testament. They were talking about Hamashiach coming in the Old Testament. Eagle, a judge, in Jeremiah 33 and 15, in those days, at that time, will I cause the branch of righteousness to grow up unto David and he shall execute judgment and righteousness in the land. I gave you a description of what each one of those uh, uh, creatures stood for. So we see the eagle is the judge. Uh, the lion is the king. The eagle is the judge. Are you seeing that? It's the judge. And that's talking about Hamashiach, the branch of righteousness. Boy, it's beautiful. If, you, if you're catching what I'm saying, it's beautiful. You see it being laid out. You see those four cherubims being described, and they all were, they all in the Old Testament were significant uh, manifestations of who uh, Yahusha was going to be in the earth. Next, you have the servant, a man, Zechariah three and eight. Hear now, O Joshua the high priest, thou and thy fellows that sit before thee, for they are men wonderful at four. Behold, I will bring forth my servant, the branch. There it is again, talking about the branch. Hamashiach was coming. Next you have uh, the ox, the determination. You see Zechariah 6 and 12, and speak unto him, saying, Thus speak Yahuwah of hosts, saying, Behold, the man whose name is the branch. He shall grow up out of his place, and he shall build the temple of Yahuwah. It was talking about Hamashiach. And when you see the name uh, uh, Joshua in this text, is really... Uh, saying Yahusha. King Yahusha is described in Jeremiah 23 and 5. He will be reigning in Jerusalem in the land allotted to Judah. He is the king who will come for all nations to restore life and reunite the whole kingdom of Yahuwah. Why restore and reunite? Because the dividing wall of petition is cracking now and it will eventually crumble and fall. There will be no more division uh, of Yah's people, nothing stopping us from coming together as united as Israel. All the whole nation of Israel is going to get back together again and we're going to be as one unit. Hallelujah. This is the message of Ephesians 2, 11, 2 uh, 22. For he is our peace who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of petition between us. Anything that got in our way from coming to Yahuwah and serving Yahuwah, Yahusha came in to bring it down and, and put us back together to, again as the kingdom of the Most High, highest people. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Hallelujah. Thank you, Yahuwah, for your plan. Next, we deal with the seraphims, meaning burning ones in Hebrew. They are fiercely devoted to Yahuwah and on fire with adoration under him. Mentioned in the book of Isaiah, the sixth chapter, it says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also Yahuwah sitting up on the throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one has six wings, with twain to cover his face, with twain he covered his feet, with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another, said, Holy, holy, holy is Yahuwah of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory, and the pulse of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, Isaiah talking, woe is me, I am undone because I am a man of unclean lips. I dwell in the midst of a people of un unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the king, Yahuwah of hosts, uh, uh, Yahuwah of hosts. The sixth verse said, then flew one of the seraphims under me, having a live coal in his hands, which had taken with the tongues from off the altar. He laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this had touched thy lips, thine iniquity is taken away, thy sin is purged. And I heard the voice of Yahuwah saying, Who shall I send and who shall go for us? Then said I, this is Isaiah, Here am I, send me. That hot coal stopped all of Isaiah's excuses. He had no more excuses. He got right, he got purged, he got purified, and he began to proclaim the message of Yah. His sins were taken away by Yah sending forth the seraphim angel to put the coal on Isaiah's lips. What a powerful story. So you see the seraphims in action. 
Are you receiving something tonight? Here are the characteristics of the angels. They are above the law. The original and the natural state of angels is that they don't marry. That's the original and natural state. Matthew 22 and 30, Luke 20, 25 and 36, they're not subject to death. Uh, are you hearing me? They don't die. Ain't, these angels don't die. We're going to hit that a little, a little far, farther in this uh, lesson. Not subject to the laws of what we call thermodynamics, that all things decay and die. Now, but the fallen angels did uh, uh, get with the daughters of men, and they did have offspring, which were the giants, the Nephilim. I'm going to talk about the giants soon, too. And these giants, uh, you can see the story about them in Genesis 6, 1 and 8, and throughout all the scripture. Uh, Goliath and his brothers, you see them all after the giants were in the land. But they, they came by way of the fallen angels. So the fallen angels' children, the offspring, did die because you know what happened to Goliath. David threw the stone, hit him in the head. He wound up dead, and, uh, ended up dead, and David cut his head off. And David and his mighty men of valor also destroyed Goliath's brothers. Are you hearing me? So there uh, are many accounts of that the angels children offspring died but the angels themselves did not die they are now reserved in darkness and chains waiting for the judgment of yah those fallen angels now you also have the messenger angels they bring messages revelations 5 and 11 you also have angels that shape ship look at genesis 18 2 and 9, 19 uh john 20 and 12 acts 12 7 and 10 and hebrews 1 and 2. Hebrews 1 and 2. I want you to check that out. Make sure I got that right quick. I don't want to make sure I give you the right scripture and everything. Hebrews 1 and make sure I got that right. Hold on, saints. go to let's go to i think it's not he wanted to conceive a three i think it's 13 and two that is be not forgetful to entertain strangers for thereby some have entertained angels unaware they shape shifted sometimes they'll change on you you don't know they're there so there's 13 and two so i want to make sure i got that right i had to look a little closer because the words are kind of small for me i can see them on my big presentation but uh, setting up my presentation to put on youtube it was just a little difficult to see so i can i can give you a great story back in 1984 hamashiach was dealing with me and he began to speak to me about coming to know who he was and he began to teach me his word and again began to show me different things i began to grow in him and i would never forget i seen this guy he was about six eight he was a big guy walking down the sidewalk when I was walking towards him, he stopped me on the sidewalk. And he said, hey, are you Hebrew? This was in 1984. I looked at him, me being new to the word and new to the Bible and to the Torah. I looked at him and said, I don't know what you're talking about. He said, are you, are you Hebrew? I said, no, I don't know. He said, you're Hebrew. He began to explain to me some things. And I said, okay, uh, <laughs> I got you. And when I turned around and walked away, I was kind of looking like, kind of baffled, like, what in the world is this guy talking about? What is he saying? I was blown away. He called me a Hebrew. Didn't know to have any idea what he was talking about. But I kept that in my mind all these years. And now here comes the truth of who I am right back to my face. Now watch this. But when I turned around to look for the guy, he was gone. I just walked a few paces. And I turned around and looked to him. Looked where he was. He had disappeared. So that was Yah giving me a visitation. Entertaining angels unaware in human form. That's why they call them. They can be shapeshifters. They also are out of space or other dimensional travelers. Daniel 10, 12 through 13. Luke 8 and 30. And make sure I got that Luke 8 and 30 right. Just give me a chance here. Be patient with me. Luke 8 and 30.
Yes, Luke 8 and 30. Keep that in mind. Uh, and Yahushua answered, saying, What is thy name? He said, Legion, because many devils were entered into him. So this man was full of devils, uh, demons. So they are out of, out of uh, other dimensional travelers. They travel from the dimension of the heavenly realm. You got the, Remember, you got the first heaven. You got the second heaven. You got the third heaven. Remember, Paul talks about that third heaven. First heaven dealing with the earth realm. Then you got the second heaven where the, the demonic beings are located. Then you got the third heaven where Yah is located. Paul talks about that. Heaven is their home. You got Psalms 103 and 20 and 21. Psalms 148 and 2. Matthew 8 and 10. Matthew 22 and 30. And Revelation 5 and 11. So I want to give you that the characteristics of the angels. Here's some more characteristics. They are ministering spirits. Matthew 4 and 11. Luke 9 and 26, John 5 and 4, Acts 10 and 33, 1 Timothy 5 and 21, Hebrews 1 and 14, Revelation 14 and 10, and they are also protectors. Uh, the angels of Yah are kept around about those that fear him. Uh, Psalms 34 and 7, uh, Psalms 91, 11 and 12, he would give his angels charge over thee, and Matthew 18 and 10. They also are escorts to heaven. When people leave their bodies, uh, Luke 16 and 22, dealing with uh, uh, Lazarus, uh, uh, when he had died at the gate of the rich man. Uh, Acts 1, 9 through 11, escorting Hamashiach back up. Remember that? Hamashiach was going back up. The angels say, why stand you here gazing? The way you see him going up, he's going to return back. Are uh, you seeing what the scripture is saying? It's right there. So the angels escorted Hamashiach. And you also see, let me show you. Acts 16 and 22. Show you I'm not making up anything. I'm giving you line up on line, precept on precept. Look at verse 20. Say, and there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores. And then it says, and it came to pass, 22nd verse, the beggar died. Lazarus died and was carried by the angel into Abraham's bosom. And the rich man also died and was buried, but he lifted up his eyes in hell. Okay. So the great gulf fix. Abraham's bosom was where they took Lazarus too. The Old Testament New Testament is filled with angels appearing to assist y'all's people. Genesis 17, 15 and 22. Genesis 19 in, uh, chapter dealing with Lot's family. How the angels took Lot's and his daughters out. His wife went with him but she turned back and ended up being a pillar of salt because she was hard headed not listening. They told them not to look back. They were lingering and the angels had to rush them out of there. Had to pull them out of there. Because y'all was coming to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. But the abomination and the wickedness that was going on. 2 Kings 6 and 17, Matthew 25 and 31, Mark 8 and 38, dealing with the characteristics of angels. Hallelujah. Also, may his, I want to say this to you tonight. May his angels stay encamped around about you and your family on a daily basis. Yahweh also give his angels charge over thee to keep you in all your ways. And let me read Psalms 37, 34 and 7. The angels of Yahuwah are encamped around about them that fear him and deliver them. So I want to say to you tonight, please subscribe to my channel. Please hit that like button and share with everyone. And please always keep your mind on Yahuwah. He loves you. He cares about you and he wants you to know the truth. He wants you to know more than just a few scriptures or more than just a few things about who you are as his people. He wants you to know the whole role. That's why he says study. I love you and shalom.